Mary Jo, it's a big one. Oh gosh! Look how big that thing is. You got him, Parker? Oh, he's huge. Good job, P. We haven't even been here for five minutes. <laughs> Good looking Pike Parker. <laughs> it's been like a minute already. I know, fun. he's big. Welcome back to our channel, everyone. We're off on a quick adventure this week. We are out at our remote cabin working on our dock that we've been working on this summer. You guys probably remember, maybe not if you're new to the channel, we have a second cabin, a remote cabin out in the wilds of Alaska, completely off grid. And we get we use the rivers and the creeks to get here by boat in the summer and spring and fall. And then in the winter, we access our cabin by snow machine. But the problem has been, all of these river weeds, river grass, whatever you want to call them, there's about 150 feet or so of these river weeds that go all the way to the shoreline of our cabin. And it's been, it's been a haul. Every time we come out to the cabin, we've got to haul all of our gear. And when you're carrying really heavy ice chests and totes, it can make it difficult. So Joe and I decided we're going to build a dock, pier, you know, boardwalk, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we've been taking you guys along for that journey and it's been super fun because this is something that we've never done before. We did build a super cute dock just like this at our main cabin, uh, but nothing of this size. This is a really big project. We have come to the realization and acceptance that we are not gonna get this dock done this season, but we got so much done. So our goal, when we left here last time, we had completed about 40 feet of this dock and we have about another 80 to go. So we brought enough wood to do about four or five more sections of this dock. Yesterday, Joe did a solo trip out to the cabin to bring all the lumber that he had pre-cut for the, the dock work we're gonna do this weekend. And you know, the rivers typically this time of year are lower than usual. We have had a lot of rain, so it's pretty muddy, but even with all the rain we've had, the river is still low and so, uh, when we have big loads like this that have a lot of weight, Joe will usually come out solo, drop off all the wood and get all that weight off the boat and also check on the rivers, make sure that they're safe. We have a lot of sandbars out here and they shift with the seasons. So he came out yesterday, dropped off all the wood and then we came out this morning with him. So we'll be staying at the cabin just for one night, a quick overnight trip. You guys know we're moving. We're gonna be moving to our new cabin and uh, uh, we're super excited and we have a lot to do. So normally we would come out for a fall trip, like an end of season trip to the remote cabin and we'd stay for a good three or four days, but we just don't have the time for that. So we're gonna have a quick overnight trip. Today, the goal is to work on the dock until we can't work no more. We're, we're getting there, but we're gonna try to get done as much as we can today. Parker's already slaying the pike and having fun fishing, and it's gonna be nice and relaxing. It was supposed to rain, but the sun came out, you know? That's always a good thing. And it's always fun just to disconnect and get away from the emails, the cell phone. We have no signal out here so it's like sorry I didn't hear you I have no signal I love that <laughs> I love being able to say that but we thought it'd be fun to take you guys with us for a you know one last season trip before the dark cold winter sets in let's see that gut job how'd you do get everything out of there most of it you that's, gotta that's the airbag yeah see that really dark stuff on the spine right here you gotta use your fingernails run your fingernails Remember oh. how dad does it? Yeah. Yeah, that's all blood. So we are not doing school today. Uh, the joys of homeschooling, right? I love the flexibility, but to me, part of Parker's homeschool is learning everyday skills to real life situations. And look, if the boy got stuck out here, he would not go hungry. That's for sure. Parker is a mean fisherman. He is good at it. Joe taught him how to gut the fish, so he guts them. And I'm just super proud of him. He just gets right in there and makes it happen. I 
I am so excited about this trip because we have partnered with Great Northern Docks. They are an American company based out of Maine. And you guys might remember a few videos back, right when we started working on our dock for the remote cabin, Joe needed a post driver, something for the four by fours, because what he's doing is he's making the four by fours into a point, and then we're driving them into the ground of the river. And what was happening with the sledgehammer as you continue hitting that four by four, it was splitting the, the four by four. It was ruining the wood. We actually destroyed several four by fours that way. And y'all know lumber ain't cheap these days. So you might remember Joe kind of fabricated his own. We had some broke down metal that was left on the property before we bought it. And Joe kind of repurposed that. He stacked some steel metal on top of each other and welded it. And he made a little DIY post driver. You guys probably remember that. And while it worked, it wouldn't have lasted the entirety of the dock. The, the top of it was already starting to dent in really badly. And we still have so much more to do that we were like, what are we going to do? Because it's just that that's not going to hold out much longer. So he came across Great Northern Docks through his research. And we talked with them about us building the dock out here at the remote cabin. And they were gracious enough to send us some awesome tools that are going to help us get this job done. So the four by four post driving cat that they sent us it's it's just heavy duty it's way better than the one that we fabricated ourselves it's three quarter inch thick steel on top and three sixteenth inch thickness on the sleeve so it's a lot thicker than the one that we were using prior to this Joe did decide to spray paint it as soon as we got it just because he wanted to protect it from rusting and from the elements but this is really gonna come in handy for many years to come because we may use this for fence posts and livestock fencing for the pasture for the sheep. There's so many things that we can use this for. The other thing they sent us was two solar shore lights. And these things are like Mac Daddy solar lights. Let me just show them to you guys. I'm so excited. We can put them out on the end of the dock here, which will be nice because this is a river that other people frequent as well. So it'll be nice to be able to illuminate the dock so no one runs into it. But look at this beautiful thing. We got two of these. They're solar lights. The set screws are included for mounting to pipes from one and five eighths inch to two and a half inch outer diameter. And it can also mount to posts and flat surfaces. The solar lanterns give 12 hours of illumination. They turn on in dim lighting. There's eight colors at the push of a button. It powers off manually or automatically. So these little nautical lanterns are gonna take our dock to the next level. You guys have asked us if this dock is gonna be affected by the ice when the river thaws in the springtime. And the answer to that question is we really don't know, right? This is our first time doing this dock out here. But I will say that this creek that our cabin is on, it's a smaller creek and the flow of the current is slow. This isn't a fast moving current. It's not like we have these large icebergs floating down the river in the spring that are gonna crush our dock and take it out of the ground but we don't know for sure you know things shift when things freeze versus when they thaw so we'll just have to see in the spring how it how it weathers through the winter time and then make any adjustments that might be needed we were really excited to see that they sent us complimentary some post brackets for the dock these special brackets they help you change the dock's height and re-level if needed you know, obviously we've done this whole dock so far with bolts. Uh, Joe and I, this was just kind of the, the design that he wanted to go with, but I could really see how these brackets would come in handy. The post and bracket method, basically like it knocks off effort and time down the road if you end up wanting to change the height of your dock by simply loosening the brackets grip on the post. If you guys wanna check out Great Northern Docks, I will link their website in the video description and they do shipping. So even if you don't live in Maine, uh, you can still work with their company and get some great products from them. And I wanna thank Great Northern Docks for partnering with our family and helping us with some really awesome tools that are gonna make our dock even better than it was gonna be before.
Nice and tight, Parker. Okay, hiker invasive species to Alaska. So that's why I kill them and I keep them. Looks like I got into a little fight or something because, yeah, it's torn right there. Because this is supposed to still be connected like that. But it's torn. It's not supposed to be like that. Anyways, it's pretty big. Gutting fish. It really took your energy out. It hurts your back too. And uh, after getting caught on uh, logs and grass and moss under the water, it's pretty uh, tiring. You have to go up to the water with your big boots. Another one? Yeah. Woo, look at that. Good job, Parker. Well, it is getting later in the evening. We've got about, what, three sections done, Joe? Yeah. I think about three sections. Our goal was four or five. That's how much lumber we brought out. So what we might do is stop after this third one, go in, cook dinner, chill out, play some games with Parker, and then after breakfast and coffee tomorrow, maybe we'll come down and do another section or two before we head home. But I think it was a job well done today. I'm so excited to see the progress. And it's really nice because as we get closer to the bank, it gets more and more out of the water. So it's just a lot easier to, to work on this dock when we're not like in a foot, foot and a half of water. It, you know, it's a lot of tedious work. It really is.
just like the, the cutting and like the leveling and the pounding and all the things. But I think we got a lot done. 24 feet, it's better than we were when we got here, Joe. So around this time of the year in September, the berries that you saw earlier are high bush cranberries. And as we go into the later September, they start to stink like dirty feet. <laughs> you know, they say like when you do videos, like try to make the people feel what you're feeling. Try to make them see what you see through your eyes. Well, I just want to let you guys smell what I smell through my nose. And right now, it smells like dirty feet. Don't it pee? Yeah, like sweaty socks. <laughs> But you know what's funny? If you harvest them and you cook them down into a syrup, they don't taste like dirty feet. They taste like cranberries. So it's just the craziest thing. Uh, but they do sink right now. Yeah. yeah. So we're heading up to the cabin. I'm excited. We're going to get dinner going and we're just going to chillax for the rest of the night. Hey, lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Over. Over. <laughs> it's pretty nice because we can actually see the dock from the front porch. I think Joe was saying we're going to try to clear some of these trees next summer. And when we do, We'll be able to see the boat parked down there at the dock, which is really nice because previously we had to park down river and we had no eyes on the boat the whole time we were at the cabin. So it'll be really nice to be able to see the boat from the front porch. There she is. It's our little cabin. So on this trip, we're also buttoning up the cabin for the winter season because we will not be back out until we come out on the snow machines when the rivers are good and frozen over. So we usually make our last trip in September sometime. Things start to freeze over in October, um, mid to late October, and we just, we don't want to chance it. So we just always come out in September. And we typically find that we like to come out after the new year. Um, I definitely do not and will not come out 
during negative temperatures. And sometimes in the winter, like last year, the coldest we saw it get was negative 38. And that is extremely cold and it's quite the drive on the snow machines. It's much faster to get here on the boat in the summer and the fall, but the snow machines take quite a bit longer. And with little Parker traveling with us, we just don't ever chance it with temperatures that cold. So we usually like to travel when it's like mid to high 20s. That's a pretty decent temperature for me. You know, the snow machines have heated hand warmers and uh, we, we dress for the weather, but we, we find that we like to come out after the new year. So we're gonna make sure everything is locked up, turned off and ready for the winter season because winter is right around the corner. I just want to be very clear. Parker is whooping our butts. Like he has like the keys to the city and we are scared to come around his corner. He has just stacks of cash and Joe and I are pension pennies. And this is the first time he's ever played this game. Joe's trying to mortgage his properties. <laughs> Baby, why do you look like you're begging? <laughs> In the town on the hill where the apples grow and the church bells ring every hour or so I took a little walk just to see the ships coming in The sun rose up right above the highway Black, blue, red, yellow, golden skyway it's like the day that you jump into the wind I can't go back down to that water again These old muddy shoes keep on walking the streets Someone's bride by an Egyptian sheep We are slow going this morning, but that's the way we intended it. Turns out it's like raining today, so I don't think we're gonna work on the dock anymore. Joe and I decided we're we're not going to. We're just gonna enjoy a nice quiet morning here at the cabin. Joe is starting breakfast for us. We're just doing bacon, eggs, and potatoes, you know, the huge, great old American breakfast. 
super happy that we got three sections of the dock done yesterday. Like I was saying, we knew we weren't gonna finish it, but we just wanted to try to get out here one last time and get a little bit more done on it. So probably eat breakfast, hang out for a little bit, button up everything for winter and head home shortly. Nice and sleepy now, you see that? Yeah, they kept me up all night. For some reason, Bradley had the poopies. And normally when we come to the cabin, we all sleep upstairs, but the dogs sleep downstairs because the dogs aren't climbing this ladder, right? And all night, like Bradley was trying to tell me he had to go poop and then he's whining and like trying to climb the ladder to get to us. So we were up all night and then we get up this morning and we're drinking coffee and now they're fine. Now they want to go to sleep. Well, hello, welcome back for another day with the Watsons. We just got home from church. We had a beautiful service this morning. And some of you asked on our most recent video what we're gonna do with our garden harvest since we're moving, if we were gonna come back to harvest our vegetables. And you guys know we are gonna be coming back and forth between the two cabins for a while because we still have some things we've gotta finish up here. Uh, even after we get all moved into the new place before we put this cabin on the market. So we are going to be harvesting our garden veggies. And, you know, it's not much of a harvest. We really didn't do a ton this year because we didn't have the greenhouse. You guys know we did do our raised bed garden this summer. And then we also planted some stuff down in the chicken tractor just as a last minute impromptu, like let's throw some seeds in the ground and see what happens. And uh, we were surprised to see that the broccoli, cabbage, and carrots did pretty good down there. But the thing is, is um, we kind of neglected the chicken tractor and didn't water it as much as we watered the raised bed garden up here by the cabin for obvious reasons, because the raised bed is like 
right out the front door. So it's, it's just like, it's in our face. It's easier to remember, but the chicken tractor area did get some water from the rain. So we have not really seen in quite a while how the veggies are doing down there. So we're going to go and take a peek. It is super duper windy outside today very windy we had to turn the panels completely horizontal and the wind is blowing like crazy but it's so pretty there's yellow leaves flying around and it's just a beautiful fall day oh i can already see the broccoli oh look at the broccoli oh my goodness yeah we we, we could, we could eat that one, little florets. We really neglected the chicken tractor. Oh, that thing is huge. Aww. Okay, okay, not too bad. Broccoli, sorry broccoli, we let you down. The cabbages look decent. Um, so I'm really happy because I was just planning on turning all that into sauerkraut and storing that with the new cabin. We're gonna have room to actually get another refrigerator and plug in our other deep freezer. I usually always have a second refrigerator to keep all my ferments in, any cheeses that I have making. Um, so I'm excited. I think I can actually salvage some of these uh, purple heads of cabbage and then maybe some carrots too. Rusty, what are you doing? The, the cabbages look great, Joe. Look at that. That's, that's, that's a good size right there. <laughs> and tons of carrots. This thing is huge. <laughs> wow. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. I know, it's huge. this thing that's how you know the ones at the grocery store are no good <laughs> when they look all perfect like that huh yellow ones didn't do too good, huh? Mm -mm. I planted way more of them. He's still a carrot. <laughs>
Well, good morning. Welcome back to the cabin. So it's actually been a couple days since Joe and I harvested the garden. Well, most of the garden. And yeah, what had happened was, you remember it was super windy? It was super windy when we were working in the garden that day. I bring the cannon out. I set it up on the tripod for a second and I'm doing something over by the solar panels. And I look over just in time to see this huge gust of wind and my tripod starts falling over with my lens facing the ground, like face first. And I'm running, trying to catch my camera, like, like slow motion. And long story short, I didn't catch it in time. So it fell face first. My lens went right into a huge rock on the ground. My favorite lens busted. And Joe tried to buff it out and I cried tears. I cried actual tears because we're getting ready to move like, like right around the corner. I want to show you guys a house tour. Like we have all this stuff coming up and in order to get a new lens on Amazon, it was going to take almost three weeks to get a new lens here. And I was just devastated. My favorite lens broke and there was nothing I could do about it. Joe scoured Facebook marketplace and found somebody that had a wide angle lens for a hundred bucks. The exact lens I had, he drove four hours to go get this lens for me. The lens I'm using right now to finish this video with you guys. <laughs> So I cried tears. I was like, oh, I should have known not to bring it out on a windy day. But you know, things happen. I'm super grateful for Joe. That is his love language. I've told you guys that before, like acts of service. If he can clean my car, if he can build me a chicken coop, if he can go and drive four hours to get me this lens that he knows I need for my videos, that's Joe's love language. He would have drove seven hours. That's just how he is. So anyway. I say that to say it's been a couple days since we harvested the veggies. They're still good. We put the celery uh, in buckets with a little bit of water. So they're nice and perky and doing just fine. But we got to get this food put up because we're moving, y'all. We have like the weekend to finish packing and then we're moving. And I'm so excited to take you guys with us to the new house and show you a full cabin tour. You guys saw the picture that I shared with you last week. Just a quick shot of the cabin on the exterior, what it looks like and and most of you are like, oh my gosh, that house is huge. It's not as big as it looks in the picture. Uh, it, it does look really big in the picture, but it's not that big. It's actually 1,400 square feet. But that is double what we have here at this cabin. So to us, it is big. And I'm excited to have a little bit more space. We won't be tripping over the dogs. You know, we have Gunner and Bradley. We've got the two cats and all three of us living in this 700 and something square foot cabin right now, which has worked and it's been fine, but it, it would be nice to have a little bit of extra space. Anyway, enough chit chat. We got a lot to do. So without further ado, we're going to start slicing and dicing. Oh, 
obviously some of these uh, cabbages are super small, like they, you know, but we don't wanna just leave them in the ground and let them rot, so we just took them all out and we'll use what we can. And we definitely planted the cabbage too close together. We knew we planted them too close together, and so some of them obviously grow a lot better than the other ones, but we're not gonna waste any of it. All right, so I know a lot of you are watching us peel the skin off of these carrots and especially a lot of the old timers are probably like, no, that's where all the vitamins and nutrients are. Well, that's also where most of the oxalates are stored in vegetables. And for those that might not know, oxalates are the defense chemicals that vegetables naturally have. And through our research that we did while we were on our 30 days of carnivore, people that have a high oxalate uh, intake in their diet it can actually worsen autoimmune issues. And you guys know that with Joe and I struggling uh, with the Lyme disease and the Rocky Mountain spotted fever, Lyme, they are autoimmune disorders. And so they cause the body to basically fight and attack itself. And so we don't want to take in anything that's gonna cause more inflammation and cause more autoimmune symptoms that we are already having from fighting these tick, tick infection diseases, right? So. We're still getting tons of nutrients from the carrots themselves, but most of the oxalates are concentrated in the skins of the vegetables, the skins of the tomatoes, the skins of the zucchini, all the veggies. And so what we're doing to kind of eliminate some of that is we're skinning the carrots and then we're gonna be processing them to put them in the canner. But just in case you were wondering, uh, we are aware that there are nutrients in the skin of the vegetables, but we're choosing to peel the skin off for that reason. We worked so hard, I mean, you guys know, you saw, to make this beautiful dirt for these garden beds using topsoil, organic foliage from the property, uh, dead leaves, and we also used sheep poop. You guys remember that? I mean, that's some really good fertilizer for a garden, and it's not a hot fertilizer, so it can actually go straight into your garden bed, and it's not gonna burn your plants. So this is some really rich soil, and sometimes it's really hard to get a good soil, and that's one of the main things that your veggies need to grow well. So I kinda wanna take it with me, but I know we can do it again at the new property. We will still have the sheep, so we will still have plenty of sheep poo. So I think we'll be good to go, but I am surprised at how, how beautiful this soil turned out, and these potatoes are huge. All right, so we came inside. We're getting ready to rinse off the carrots one last time, get those jarred up. And all I'm doing is raw packing them with some a little bit of salt. And then we're gonna pressure can those. And I'm probably gonna throw together the fermented carrots really quick too, and I can show that to you guys. It's just super simple.
Well, Jojo, you're doing a mighty fine job here. I need you to make sure that uh, two by six is a little bit straighter next time, all right? I don't want to have to dock your pay. Straight as Christmas is right around the corner. I don't want to dock your pay. I need you to make that happen, though, okay? You hear me, sir? Did you hear what I just said to you? I'm the foreman, or the forewoman, and I need that two by six to be a <laughs> Is that what happens when people go postal at work? I mean, I don't think they necessarily take like branch trimmers to their neck, but <laughs> just saying. Hey, Joe, maybe we should ban all branch trimmers. Just kidding, just kidding. Like that? Yeah, baby. Are you gonna do the intro? Oh, okay. 
You said it was gonna be different this time and you were gonna do the intro. And go. Ready? Action! Joe, that's yeah. when you just I'm be like, hey it. guys! Like that, don't do it like that actually. <laughs> hey guys! No, you go, hey guys. No, you hey don't, guys. Don't, don't clean the lens with your shirt. We have wipes for that. With a manly voice like, Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Just try it. Hurry up, swing go. Babe, maybe this is a new era. Hurry up, swing my arm's getting tired. Tell me about it. You need a selfie stick. <laughs> down, down, down we go. Okay, I'm not doing it. That's a horrible angle. Don't do that angle. No, we don't do that. Remember, that's the 75 year old Tina angle. Ready? That. If you want to know what you're going to look like when you're 75, you just turn your face upside down. Like that. That's so... No. You do it. No. Do 75 Joe. That's it. Alright, for real, do it. No. Tell them what we're going to do today. No, I'm not. Why? You are going. Ready and go. I'm sorry. Okay, I don't hold the camera like that, first of all, so give me the camera then. Because that's not how you hold it. <clears throat> Why are you trying to leave me out? I'm not trying to leave you out. You didn't want to be in it. Joseph, you need to make up your mind. Got you, Liz. <laughs> Aw, broccoli flowers. Joe, that's what I always wanted in my life. <laughs> the best bouquet. Aw. You're the best, Joe. I you like it. Yeah, you didn't even have to buy them, see? Money doesn't buy my heart, Joe. Broccoli does. It's a mama cabbage and a baby cabbage. Mama cabbage said to the baby, it's time for bed. Baby cabbage said, I don't want to go to bed. And mama cabbage said, I know. 